and welcome to today's devotion. My name is Jane Setter and today we will be reflecting on the theme, the aroma of worship. Our scripture reading is taken from the book of Mark chapter 14, verse 3 to 9. It reads, And being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came having an alabaster flask of very costly oil of spagnard. Then she broke the flask and poured it on his head. But there were some who were indignant among themselves and said, Why was this fragrant oil wasted? For it might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they criticized her sharply. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always. And whenever you wish, you may do them good. But me, you do not have always. She has done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body for burial. As surely I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will always be told as a memorial to her. This is one of my most fascinating passages in the Bible for me. Each time I read this passage, I always imagine a picture of Jesus and his disciples sat down to dinner and in comes a woman, uninvited, without saying any words. She breaks the jar of the most costly possession that she would ever possess, probably ever possess in her life. She pours out all its contents on Jesus and then comes criticism from those present but Jesus sets them straight and reminded them that the poor will always be with them. What this woman did was significant for his forthcoming barrier. I admire the courage and devotion with which this woman approached Jesus. I was, I'm always thinking to myself, was she even, was that even allowed back then? A woman in the company of men? But she didn't care. She was bold and confident. She wasn't bothered about what others said or thought about her actions. She wasn't there to impress anyone. Her sole aim was to offer the ultimate act of love, devotion, and sacrifice to her king. To perform a prophetic act of anointing Jesus' head. Perhaps the woman was a religious woman who understood the times, and knew what Jesus would go through in the next couple of days. Or perhaps, like many of us, she had been rescued, forgiven, and restored by Jesus. She was therefore bringing her hurt and brokenness, surrendering them all to Jesus. This is a powerful sense of worship that demands nothing less than to be utterly exposed. A life completely poured out. Her heart was certainly in the right place, focused on Jesus. It is a powerful reminder of what our love for Jesus and worship should look like as believers. A heart that wholly seeks after God. We learn from this woman that true worship is a life poured out in response to a God who emptied himself for us. Jesus emptied himself to become human and then as human, he lived humbly amongst us in what we regard today as extreme poverty. In the end, we see the ultimate act of generosity, giving up his human life for us all, the most precious and important gift of all times. Five days later, with the scent of the perfume still lingering in his memory, I want to believe, Jesus made his way to the cross. Our God poured out himself like the precious perfume that was passionately poured out. He emptied himself on the cross as a sacrifice, holy and acceptable, as he died for us all to atone for all our sins. As we celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ this Easter season, 
May we ask God to speak to our hearts about the passion and generosity that we have witnessed, which was demonstrated in this passage. May we allow the passion of the woman with the alabaster jar to fill our worship like the powerful perfume that was poured out. Thanks for watching and have a lovely day. God bless.